This video is intended as a quick overview of three different ionization modes of mass spectroscopy using the same compound, then adding in some additional physical chemistry and MSMS information, and hopefully gaining an enhanced appreciation of the sulfur dioxide expulsion with rearrangement occurring in several sulfonamides. We'll be, contra we'll be concentrating more on the data and less on the data acquisition methodology. So I apologize in advance if portions of the video seem excessively lacking. References will be at the end of the video. Our compound is sulfapyridine, molecular weight 249, and from the NIST 2014 MS library, over three dozen synonyms. The three ionization modes are going to be electron impact for GC mass spec, electrospray ionization for LCMS and MSMS, and meta, well, helium metastable impact for DART. And you're going to see that the spectra are definitely different. So let's get started with GCMS. And uh, G so here we have our total ion chromatogram up here. And, and yes, the uh, GC chromatography is not the world's greatest. Uh, the point is to just kind of get uh, some sort of separation for the sulfapyridine. And then here we have, let me just uh, do this again as far as getting the uh, spectrum. So if we average across here and then we take some background, spectrum, subtract, uh, we get this and let's just zoom in here uh, up to say 280 all right and you can see big 184 no 249 no 250 which is supposed to be the well 249 is the molecular weight all right so 249 to the 184 185 that's loss of 64 65 and if you're losing 64 from a uh, sulfonamid that has a SO2 in the middle of it, all right, once you suspect that, gee, we're, maybe we're kicking out sulfur dioxide. And if we do a library search, okay, the top three picks, sulfapyridine. And you can see that the reference is uh, like the uh, data. Right. So, okay, electron impact. Usually, you get at least some sort of indication of what the molecular weight is, not the abstraction of or expulsion of SO2. Right. Well, let's take a look at some other ionization modes. This is the electrospray of a Sulfapyridine solution in methanol. Uh, concentration is roughly 35 nanograms per microliter of sulfapyridine in uh, methanol water. Uh, uh, methanol, it's about 2% water in, in methanol. And uh, this is a dynamic situation. It's doing a scan a second. And so right here we have the, uh, the molecular weight of Sulfapyridine is uh, 249, so this is the M plus 1, this is the sodium adduct. You can see in this setup it's a very dynamic and uh, changing situation. Now, one the ion going to be interest that we're concerned with is this one here, which on the um, Xactive showed up, this uh, 184, 185 cluster also shows up in the electron impact, and so that's the uh, sulfur dioxide expulsion, presumably. Uh, and so we're going to use MSMS, 
to examine this a little bit. Okay? So right now we just want to confirm that we have a decent signal. Uh, again, flow is 12.5 uh, microliters per minute and being infused at uh, 30, with 35 nanograms per microliter. So, uh, if we take a look at the positive electrospray spectrum uh, collected on the thermoexactive, uh, the electrospray source is a sub, is a heated one and is a more of an open electrospray source than the one on the Psyx. We have our M plus one at 250. We have our one sodium addict, two, actually two sodium addicts, and we have our 184, 156. All right. Um, you, you do see the molecular ion or the protonated molecular ion here as compared to electron impact. And it's sort of similar in character to what was seen on the uh, Psyx. And if we take a look at the positive dart spectrum, you can see a nice M plus one Oh, actually a tiny bit of the 156 and maybe way down here, you know, just that teeny tiny inkling of the uh, 184. So, uh, and uh, the dart source is a much lower energy one. Uh, you're talking about uh, exciting uh, helium at around uh, at less than 500 volts uh, generating uh, metastable and the metastable then impacts the sulfapyridine which then does the ionization so it's uh, a much gentler ionization See? let's just recap three different mass spectra same compound different ionization modes GC mass spec 70 EV electron impact, we have this 184, no molecular ion. Electrospray ionization, now electrospray is in solution, GC mass spec, by the time it goes through the column, is not going to be in solution. We have our molecular, what, protonated molecular ion, uh, 1 sodium, 2 sodium, uh, significant 184. And in DART, uh, it's not a solution. And it's uh, uh, the least energetic. It involves helium metastables impacting the compound. And here we have just the protonated molecular ion. Let's add in some physical chemistry data obtained from library searching of the literature, and uh, we may get a better idea as to why these things are, these spectra are so different. If you go to the PubChem website and search for sulfapyridine, you'll find uh, this graphic. In 2011, uh, Pratt et al. did the low temperature crystal structure of sulfapyridine. And just to make it a little bit more uh, discernible as to what's going on, or what the information is, let me move this. So as you can see, the uh, SO2 group here is uh, pretty prominent. Uh, I like to think of it as uh, have as the SO2 being sort of like the head of a bird and then we have our organic wings on the side. So for the SO2 expulsion, uh, you have to have multiple bonds breaking, the SO2 coming out, this stuff rearranging and recombining. That's That seems to be an um, I would have thought it would have been a very high energy uh, reaction. 
Now, 70 eV is a lot of energy to accomplish that. Okay, we're going to kick SO2 out. We're going to recombine these things. Um, but there's also some photochemistry information that indicates that this is a, a low temperature, a low energy uh, reaction possibility. So let's go on to that. In 2008, uh, researchers were looking at the photolysis of sulfadiazine. It's, uh, sulfadiazine is very similar to sulfapyridine. It has in the one aromatic uh, nitrogen-containing side group that has the internal nitrogen uh, in the aromatic ring. It, uh, sulfadiazine has two. Um, so if this wasn't here, if this was just a carbon, it would be sulfapyridine. And uh, in the photolysis, of, uh, using irradiating it from 290 to 800 nanometers, right, or essentially 4.3 eV to 1.5 eV in energy, they got what they call photoproduct A, right, which is the expulsion of SO2 and having those wings linked together. Now this is sulfadiazine, all right? In uh, 2012, all right, so here's a, a figure from that pu publication. Researchers uh, ac actually did photolysis of sulfapyridine, and they have our, all they call is minus SO2. And again, we get this kicking out SO2, linking up the uh, organic wings, and in that case, they use a little bit more energetic light, 200 to 800 nanometers, or 6.2 eV to 1.5 eV. But again, kicking out an internal constituent like that, rearranging and combining, that is some interesting chemistry. And if we look at the MSMS of sulfapyridine, the uh, having Q1 feed in 250, and looking at the collision-induced spectra at various collision energies, all the way down to uh, the, the lowest practical one for the Psi-X was 2 eV. Um, but at, even at the lowest ones, uh, as we'll see, there is the inkling of that expulsion of SO2 and rearrangement. For MSMS, uh, we're going to have Q1 let in to the collision cell uh, M over Z 250, and we're going to scan Q3 from 10 to 265. Uh, roughly one second scans, all right, and we're going to collect 30 of these. In the MCA mode, and so we'll average them all up. And the collision energy is the difference between R1 and R2. We're going to start off at a difference of 5 eV. And we'll see if this uh, 184 presents itself. So let's just take, uh, let's start this. Uh, we have about the right collision gas thickness and start. All right. So you can see in this presentation. All right. So we're let Q1's letting in 250. We have 250, and we have a little bit of the 184, and some of this uh, 155. And we're going to take a look at is to see, get an idea as to what sort of energy is required for that sulfur dioxide uh, expulsion. And this is with a collision gas of uh, collision energy of 10 uh, volts. And so you can see that the 184 is increasing.
And by the time we get to collision energy 15 EV, you can see that 184 is comparable to the uh, initial precursor ion. And by the time we get to a collision energy uh, 24 volts, uh, there's like hardly any of the precursor left, and we have to see the nice uh, 184. So let's take a quick look at the effect of collision energy for that sulfur dioxide expulsion. So down here, we so we have uh, collision energy 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 volts. All right. Uh, so you can you can see why an electron impact with 70 eV doesn't show the uh, molecular ion at all, because by the time you get to uh, 20 eV, you're you're essentially not getting any molecular ion you're going to be converting to the sulfur uh, dioxide expulsion and other fragments. For our web resources and references, right, we have the NIST Chemistry Web Book. There are a lot of 70 eV electron impact mass spectra for the sulfonamides, and you'll see that uh, SO2 expulsion in their spectra, some of them exceedingly significant. Uh, PubChem web book has the sulfapyridine uh, 3D confirmation graphic. Crystal structure for the low temperature crystal structure for sulfapyridine was in 2011. Uh, handy energy of a photon calculator. The photochemistry of sulfapyridine was in 2012 uh, in a water research journal, and the photochemistry uh, involving sulfadiazine was earlier. Uh, sulfadiazine is a very prevalent antibiotic, especially in animal feed, and uh, it was in, uh, that reference is in uh, 2008. Okay, quick 10 second each uh, spectrum recap. This is the DART spectrum, big M plus one. And very little fragmentation. This is the positive electrospray. We have the M plus one, M plus 23. There's a sodium adduct, two sodiums, big 184. This is electron impact, most energetic, big 184, 185 no indication of molecular ion whatsoever.